That feeling when you throw out the final sliver of pumpkin pie that sat on top of the microwave for five days. You know it's no longer hygienic, but you deeply considered still eating it. That sounds like you, Sarah. Is it weird and wrong if my cat stares at me when I'm naked in the shower? It's weird and wrong, but my cat does the same thing. (laughs) Meet your new favorite towels, says Instagram. Back in stock, the internet's favorite sweater, says Instagram. People can't stop talking about this lint roller, says Instagram. Last chance to save, y'all. Best deals ever. The sale of the century. I have a thought. Maybe you don't need it. Maybe you don't. Have such a good day. Hello, Hello world. world. Welcome, Welcome back. Have such, such a good, good day. day. The show. Okay, <laughs> Heather, my little shadow. <laughs> I have become your shadow. I, I have. Hello. Here we are again. Did you miss us? We've been gone only what a few days. But a huge holiday has passed. And how are you indeed feeling? Has, I, I'm yeah. feeling one size larger, Sarah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling I'm feeling okay. I I weighed myself the other day. It's sort of you <laughs> Why know Why did you do that? I don't know, because I'm a weirdo. Um and you know, obviously a glutton for punishment. Yeah. What was funny about this is that okay, so I've got the scale that needs, you know, it's like a digital scale, so it needs batteries. Yeah. And I just hadn't like I don't know. I I don't weigh myself on a daily basis, more like once or twice a week, you know, just kind of just kind of making sure things are all good in the hood kind of thing. And um, the other day it uh, it just wouldn't turn on, you know, and, you know, Uh and you kind of you have to like press it with one foot to get to the zero and then you step on it kind of thing. Like I'm I'm aware of this. Yeah. And it just, instead of like giving me like the zero zero, it just said low, like L O. (laughs) So I was like, oh God, all right, we need new batteries. You know, like this is, you know, who even knows when batteries go into scales, right? Yeah. And so I changed the batteries and I stepped on it and it worked as advertised. And I was like, well, I don't like the look of this. Okie dokie, Sarah has had too much pumpkin pie. So for me, it's I don't weigh myself at all. I, I know people do. I know people who do it religiously, like every single morning. I don't, only when I go to the doctor. However, I can tell if I've gained a pound or two when I put on certain jeans. Oh, yeah. Because I'm like, oh, wow, oh, yeah. these are tighter than huge. Oh, yeah. And that's just my barometer of, and then I'll, I'll start wearing my like, like slightly bigger size because i i'm in between two sizes so it's like when i wear my 25s i'm like sometimes 24s where like those are the ones maybe i'll go out and they're kind of tight but they're fine they're comfortable enough i just wouldn't like lounge around in them i might wear my 26s on the weekend (laughs) you know i just sort of be a little bit more cash or you know my baggier jeans which i do have um oh i know your style the 90s style which is hot right now I was I was uh, joking with somebody earlier today about indoor pants and they were like well what's Uh indoor pants and I'm like you know uh, like sweats (laughs) (laughs) or or you know stretchy or leggings that yeah Yeah. don't you know have like a specific fit like you can yeah you can make them your own now um people joke about indoor pants because it's like oh Mm -hmm. you're not trying that hard like you're not like actually like putting pants on their pants I mean, I, pants, I, you know, I go outside with indoor pants all the time. Maybe I'm not going to go to like a fancy restaurant in, sure. you know, in my indoor pants, but they're still like, I mean, they're not like embarrassing or anything like that. No, I have some cute sweats. I mean, indoor pants, party pants. I mean, there's all kind of pants out there. Crazy there, pants. There's also like, like there's definitely a, a line where it's like, I have pajama pants that I would not. Sure. I'm not going to wear those out no. to the bank. No. They're, they're like, they're like. Uh, people do that though. Yeah. Like it's like, there's a reason they call them intimate wear. It's like, it's not even like sexy stuff. It's just like, they're clearly no. pajama pants. And yeah, I'm not going to yeah. Bank of America wearing those no, pants. No, I would like not do that. Maybe some like cute pink sweats to the post office or the grocery store with some like booties or something it's 100%. like 100 sure like i am never gonna wear my pjs to the bank which i've seen that happen i've seen people do that and it i i have been scarred for life 
Um, y'all, welcome to the show <laughs> yeah, um, yes. that unpacks the absurdity <laughs> of everyday life for your entertainment. Absurd nice is the segue. word, Heather. Pajamas to the bank. <laughs> We're in pajamas to the bank. Like, the, I see people around, I mean, where I where I have been living for the last couple of months, few months, I, I will see sometimes, like, I don't really care if somebody's wearing pajamas. Like, well, at the same time, it's like, Depends on the time of day, right? Like if it's 4 sure. p.m. and someone's in pajama pants, I'm like, well, maybe you work nights. And so you've been mm-hmm. sleeping and like this is your morning because I consider that sort of like a morning thing where you're like, eh, who cares? I had to run an yeah. errand, you know, sue me. Totally. But um, what always gets me and part of this is just because I'm I am, and I don't know how much we've ever talked about this, Heather, although I know you and I agree on this. I am a no-shoes household, you know? Mm -hmm. You go inside, Mm -hmm. you take your shoes off. It's the first thing you do. Yeah. Um, And, you know, put on uh, slippers, or maybe you've got comfy socks, or maybe you want to, you know, go barefoot. I don't care, but shoes in the house just makes me feel crazy. I've yeah. I've known lots of people who are like, why are you like so weird about it? Like all sorts of things have been outside and you bring them into mm-hmm. the house and put them on various surfaces. And it's like, yeah, but shoes, I don't know. Like, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. But it's like it's like what's worse, you know, because I it's funny that you mentioned this uh, today because I when I put my boots on this morning, I do have a lot of shoes by the door. We are not an exclusive no shoe household. It's really tough. You haven't seen my layout yet, but it's just really hard to always do it, always change into slippers. But because I'm sometimes I'm in and then I'm quickly back out, or I'm going of course. to the garage, yeah, my car. Right. I'm going to the garden real quick. But I um, this is what, such a gripe I have living in a place like this where there's no sidewalks. Is this pair of boots? Um, I, w- I went into the bathroom real quick. Like I had already been wearing them. I was dressed for the day. I had some meetings this morning. And so I like ran in the bathroom to grab one thing with my boots on. And then I, I like kind of got a little startled because on the ground there was this like weird looking like thing that looked like a big bug, but it was actually a clump of, of dried mud that came off my boot, you know? And it's mm-hmm. like, it that's, mm-hmm. that's. Uh, one reason enough to like take your shoes off before cruising around the house yeah i mean there's definitely like there are cultural reasons you know sometimes you know people just are like no shoes in the house i am somewhere between that and just sort of what you're talking about where i'm like Mm -hmm. might be a clump of poop (laughs) that comes in from outside you know it's like i don't walk around barefoot outside so i don't want my shoes to be inside i mean it just it makes sense worse almost yeah, I'd almost rather have mud than like, um, you know, real like a dirt, like a dirty cigarette butt or like, you know, something from like a city sidewalk that's dirty. Yeah. Like human urine. And, but so, you know, so, stuff that so, is so, super disgusting. Yeah. It just, I just feel like I'm like, it's not that hard. It can be a little annoying if you're like coming in and out of the front door. Like, you know, maybe you're doing various errands. I yeah. mean, sure. And there are some times where you just kind of go like, okay, I'm in a huge hurry. I'm just going to just bite the bullet. It's not the yeah. end of the world. But going back to the idea of pajama pants at the bank, um, one of the things that <laughs> makes me insane is people wearing slippers outdoors. same So it's like, it's like people wearing shoes indoors where I'm like, eh, take your shoes off. I mean, isn't it just mm-hmm. better that way? Mm-hmm. Like, like, you know, like you can't really argue with me that it's not better this way but wearing slippers outdoors even like and like slippers are you know it's not like a one slipper fits all ha ha you know some (laughs) slippers are like you know they kind of have like a you know like a pretty like decent bottom and they're sort of meant for they're almost like shoes yeah they're meant for I don't really know what they're meant for but they're just like a little bit sturdier than other slippers yeah. But even so, I'm like, okay, well, that's just a nice fit for your slipper. You're not supposed to go to the bank and your slipper. Well, you know, this is an interesting thing to unpack, Sarah, because recently a guy rolled into the local cafe. It was like late morning. It was like 11. So not like super early in the morning, but like also not like the afternoon. Uh, wearing slippers and like, can you know, somewhere between pajama pants and sweats. It was kind of a gray area. Um, <laughs> but but the slippers sort of like, there's something a little bit, 
I, I don't want to use the word offensive, but it is a little annoying. It's like, it's almost disrespectful or something. I can't figure out what the feeling I had. It was just like, yeah, dude, I don't, yeah. Like disrespectful would not be the word that I would use, but I know what effort. you're going for. It's like, yeah, it doesn't like even, sloppy. it doesn't like offend me, but I'm like, what is happening right now? Yeah. But what is the feeling that we it's, feel? It's more it's than I, you know, I, I, not gonna ask a stranger too many questions although I would love to but it's almost like I'm like well but are these your outside slippers or do you go inside with the slippers because now these are just shoes but they're clearly like fuzzy slippers yeah exactly and then I'm like well maybe I make a concession because maybe he lives two doors down and he's literally just like rolling out he could be literally next door or to in a cafe hurry or yeah out. like who knows I mean I'm not I'll let it slide. I'm not going to judge y'all because I'm wearing indoor pants right now as we record this podcast. Um, and I will probably keep them on when I take my dog out as soon as we're done. But yeah, they're, <laughs> like, there are just certain things where it's like, I just, just want to know more. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. etiquette is eye of the beholder. And there are yeah. a lot of etiquette things that I just don't subscribe to. Like, I mean, yeah, 100%. not wearing white after Labor Day, you know, like, like there, oh, there are a lot of things that people now. care about where I'm like, that's so dumb. Who cares? It's so dumb. You know, it's really funny. There was one fashion uh, blog that, that um, the post that they sent out right before the holidays was literally how to if you really insist on wearing sweatpants to like a holiday party here's how you can dress them up like full on oh. heels like nice sweats earrings like really doll it up but like wear sweats i mean it was it wasn't even a joke it was oh no and I no really I'm, think the I'm sure of has it. changed yeah. uh the sweats thing i actually for sure. bought a pair of sweats i'm i'm kind of you know this is I would consider this like I'm doing like air quotes, like fancy sweats, right? Where people mm -hmm. go like, what's yeah. a fancy pair of sweatpants? It's like, I don't mm -hmm. know. They're just expensive and fancy or something. But um, <laughs> I have a I have a couple pairs of them. I I, I wouldn't feel right, uh, you know, again, using the bank reference like mm, no. But um, but I there there's a pair of sweats that I have that have like holes in them but like again lots of jeans like have holes purposely yeah. like it's it's you know on purpose it's a style mm -hmm. and but they're kind of fitted I mean they don't look I mean like joggers you probably will, would look at me and be like all right she's wearing sweatpants in public but like they're like yeah. supposed to be like cute sure like you wear them with cute shoes probably not heels I don't think I would ever mm -hmm. do that but like you know, yeah, like cute, I don't know, you know, running shoes or, you know, a sweater or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, that sort of thing. But there, there's one pair of sweats that I have that I bought for this exact reason because I was just like, it was kind of when I was having health issues a couple of years ago and I was like, F it. You know what? Mm -hmm. We're going indoor pants full time, y'all. And they came, <laughs> I had bought them on the, on the internet, of course. Uh, they came and they were like so puffy and like, they fit me. I mean, like vertically they fit me, which is, you know, I mean, that's saying a lot because I'm so little, but like they were just like thick and very much something that you would wear like in a sleeping bag while camping. Mm, mm -hmm. You would like not dress much. these sweats up. No, 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 no. I wouldn't even go to Safeway <laughs> in these sweats. And it's not to say that I don't like them. I actually do. They're my favorite sweats, but like they're just like, unflattering and I know what you mean big and yeah. puffy they're like super comfy yeah, yeah that's all yeah, that's sure. all they are and I was like that's kind of how I feel about the 90s jeans right now I'm like I'm what are I'm the not 90s like, jeans the 90s style is like so back where it's like you've got oh, these like baggy jeans are getting baggier not even bell bottoms like wide leg oh, like where it's like yeah. not just mm -hmm. you know where it hugs the the hips and then opens up into a bell oh it's like the, that's it's like all the girls thing. with the half shirts and yeah the big yes. baggy jeans big baggy jeans yeah. that are straight they're they're kind of like it's all one like wide uh -huh. leg yeah it's like which, wide okay. boot cut I get it I have one pair that's like maybe like not as uh comically large as the ones you see out there uh but I'm also kind of a small person and the more baggy stuff I wear I get really lost and mm -hmm. it's not very flattering I feel like you have to be like really a model like you have to have like a really perfect model body to like pull off 
stuff that on the rack is kind of ugly, let's be honest. Um, anyway, we, we could get caught in this uh, fashion loop all show long if we want, Sarah. Yes. But I know there's other things we yes. need to let's, talk let's about Let's loop today. on out of that. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> thank you for indulging my sweatpant journey, everyone. And we want you to have the right pants for you. Um, but, uh, but going forward, I know uh, in last week's episode, and I think the week before that, just because this is all I think about, Talked about apartment hunting. Apartment mm-hmm. hunting from afar, specifically. So this is me, like, looking at a couple photos of something and trying to figure out, like, is this, you know, a scam? You know, why is it, you know, so expensive? Or why does it seem to be underpriced? You know, there, mm-hmm. you just, you never know what you're going to get. I'm looking at, mm-hmm. Lo- in Los Angeles specifically, which anybody who's familiar with that urban sprawl knows that, Boy, do you get, you, it runs the gamut. Uh, You Mm -hmm. never know what you're going to get. You really, you really kind of have to be there. So me having been uh, up at my mom's house for the holidays has proven uh, to be somewhat difficult. Um, And I've been lucky enough to have some folks that are in the area, you know, check out places that I thought were, you know, really promising for me. Um, And in fact, I'm, even while we're recording, I'm hoping to hear back from this place that I really, really want. Um, Mm -hmm. But uh, again, like I have not physically been there, Um, but I, and I think, you know, the whole process sometimes, Heather, I I know you know this because you have a good sense of, of kind of apartment style and interior design. Like you'll look at a place and you'll just be like, this isn't even that bad of an apartment, but what the fuck are they doing you know like why is the couch orange and you know like yeah or like you know you can tell that they've put like fake furniture in there you know kind of ai type stuff yeah where it's totally. all designed to like look like the perfect apartment but you're like no these aren't real pieces of furniture like you can like that's creepy i've never experienced the ai apartment hunting because oh, yeah. i haven't looked for an apartment for a few right. years so like oh, the ai no, thing it's... oh that that's kind of gross well Uh, it's what's nice about it it is that it is you know quote unquote staged right not Mm -hmm. unlike if you were going to buy a house which i'm not going to anytime probably ever Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) just we're not in that place in my life but um but it 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 always it's like oh the couch fits so nice on that wall but it's like but how long is that couch is that a real couch and you can kind of see on the edges that it's been put in there yeah. This is the new thing, but, um, wow. Yeah. But, uh, so, th- so there's that. So there's, you know, an apartment that you kind of go like, okay, well, none of that stuff is going to be in here when I get in there. So, you know, let's mm-hmm. use your imagination type thing. Um, and then there are other places that are like so gorgeous. Um, and you kind of go like, well, what's the catch? Um, mm-hmm. and there's always sort of a catch, you know, nothing is really just, cheap or free for no reason sure I mean oh I don't know maybe you know something falls out of the sky and you get it but like that's pretty seldom usually there's something going on um and I'm fairly good at sniffing it out not always obviously um Mm -hmm. you know I was almost duped uh recently just because I've been like aggressively trying to you know figure out my next move but um but yes, it is. It is odd, um, and there are there are a lot of little tricks though that I think are really helpful. Now, one of those tricks is, I mean, you, everybody out there, and you obviously have their no Google Street View. It's like, all right, mm-hmm. let's see what it looks like. Let's look around. You know, I yeah, walk out the front the door. Like, what located. does the street look like? Like, what is it like? Yeah, like, what's the vibe? What does it tell me? Are there trees? You know, what's the parking situation? Is there a cetera, homeless camp encampment? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, and if there is, I wouldn't be the first time I lived near one. But um, mm-hmm. what I have, and I'm a little late to the game on this, going to be honest, is that Apple Maps has its own street view. And, Mm -hmm. you know, their cameras take things at different times than Google's. Mm -hmm. You know, I always just always went to Google for the longest time. And there was an apartment 
it wasn't an apartment I got. Unfortunately, I don't know. It, it, uh, it was rented to someone else. Uh, but I mm-hmm. really liked it. This is a couple of weeks ago. And I had a friend go and look. And she was like, oh, yeah, this is great. You know, get, get the apartment. But the Google Street View uh, version of it was like clearly when, because it had been recently renovated, the building itself. Mm-hmm. And so when you look at the Google Street View, it's like, oh, it was like during renovation. So it looks like crap. But you're like, mm-hmm. oh, OK. But I get what they were doing. And she was like, oh, but like, but the Apple Maps version is like really nice. Like you can see what it looks like now. And I was like, oh, I hadn't done that. I mean, I use Apple Maps as far as driving in my car here sure. and there, but I'm not really looking visually at it. Mm-mm. And yeah, you can get a very good, um, you know, between the two, you can get a pretty good. I mean, again, this is granted that whatever you're looking at is actually has been mapped and not every street mm-hmm. will be even in urban areas. But in urban areas, good chance that unless it's like some like weird alley, it probably has been mapped by one or mm-hmm. one or both. And mm-hmm. and they will give you a couple different, you know, even like even if it looks the same, it's like different time of day. The light is different. And it just gives you that much more of like a good sense of like, OK, here's what we're working with, um, which mm-hmm. is has been helpful to me because this is Heather. When I move into my next apartment I swear to you I will not talk about this for 12 months minimum because that's the least okay agreement okay. <laughs> because I have become an insane person yeah I know it does make you insane but maybe this will make you feel better um I have a friend she's a good friend of mine who had to purchase her house her current house from afar without like before seeing it in person she literally purchased a house from europe back in the states um and never saw it in person (laughs) so Mm, i think mm -hmm, renting mm -hmm. is a lot better than that i would be a little bit nervous pulling the trigger on anything without seeing it in person but i think yeah technology today and especially i got to check out the apple maps version of street view because i haven't done that um but yeah i mean it's like you can just parse it together it's like a puzzle it's like okay yeah and you can see every angle you see the inside you see all the corners the front the back and so yeah why do you need to see it in person what is going to reveal itself in person that you're not going to see on a video or like really crisp photographs maybe there's a smell Mm-hmm. Maybe there's, um, you know, something that, and maybe I'm sure they're working on this technology. Um, in fact, someone the other day, we were joking about Instagram as we were at the top of the show of all the, you know, all the, the sales and just all the co- coercing of buying things. And a friend kind of chimed in and said, I said, it's, it's like the mall, but you don't have to get out of bed. And she's like, yeah, but there's no, um, a Cinnabon or something. I'm like, well, that's coming. Uh, the scent technology is coming. But yeah, I mean, other than that, you know, what else would you actually see uh, if you were there in person? I don't know, like a feeling, a vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Um, but it's exciting, Sarah. Like, I'm excited for you. I think I think it'll be a really, like I told you earlier this year, you're going to have a change. You're going to get out of this muck and it's going to be new and exciting. Look at you. Look at you now. Yeah. You're, you're on your way Thank to you. your new life. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think... I don't know. I mean, you and I have you and I have talked about this a lot. We've also lived together as roommates. I mean, we know mm-hmm. how it is to to move around. Um, mm-hmm. I have never really, you know, there's never been like a sort of like, oh, this is home for me for more than a few years at a time. Yeah, like including when I was a child. Uh, my mm-hmm. parents and I moved around, you know, we were renters. That's just kind of how life works. And, you know, uh, you know, various stuff that had to do with, you know, my dad's jobs and and this and that. And, you it's know, sort of ingrained in you. Yeah. At the same time, I mean, moving is not fun for me. It's actually really mm-hmm. stressful. And because, you know, a home is, you know, when people get like woo woo and be like, my home is my sanctuary. And you're like, Ugh. but like it <laughs> is and it should be. And if it isn't, it's like, okay, well, what purpose does it serve? Like, is your neighborhood your sanctuary? Because that's okay, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you could be like, I want this neighborhood 
so bad and like I don't care if the home itself is like not that big a deal I work from home so the home itself is a pretty big deal you know even if I'm working out of the garage which I am right now it's like there is a space thing that that is like it really does matter it does matter. We spend a lot of time at home. A friend uh, that I went to her Thanksgiving, her friend's giving party up the road, she was just saying, she's like, we spend like 90% of our time and they have a couple little babies uh, also. So like they're kind of, uh, you know, they're kind of trapped at home, not trapped. They have a beautiful home, but she's like, I mean, we just, you know, we spend a lot of time at home and people do. I mean, unless you're yeah, you're like a um, exce- you're an excessive traveler, and and you always want to kind of bounce. But um, I I don't know. Home is a sanctuary, or can be, and I feel that way. I, I want to have home as a sanctuary, which is why we should take our shoes off, leave them at the door. Um, you know, it's funny. Real quick on that note, I'm looking for like a new like. I feel like shoe racks and just like you know, mudroom, shoe organization. I just don't like any of it. And I think Mm, mm -hmm. that's part of the problem that I have is I have these, I have these inlay like shelves in my closet that are amazing. They're, they're for shoes. Like I don't even put the boxes there. I just put all the shoes I wear on a regular basis and it's great. Um, but that's upstairs and not right by the door. So I'm, I'm actually looking for a solution. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it's hard to display them and them not to look muddy and dirty and crappy and all of that. Uh, but that's on my long list of to do's. The really dizzying thing, though, lately, Sarah, mm-hmm. is all of these sales days in a row of all these sales. And I, I was actually listening to a lot of podcasts about this and how it like it's kind of called like gray Friday now because it's kind of like there's all this gray area of like when it started really? and yeah uh, I, I read that gray somewhere Friday just what, sounds like mm, yeah it don't sounds kind don't, of don't get involved in that gray Friday yeah. yeah exactly but like it started way early I mean a lot of retailers there's a lot of competition now and I think people kept starting earlier and earlier because they thought well if i don't we're going to miss out and people are going to buy it because there's so much competition with these retailers that sell the same products um and anyway so i don't want to belabor this but you know today is is giving uh tuesday my inbox is basically like the animals are counting on you and you know it's all about like giving to places that need uh your help which i'm going to do for sure Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. probably all my money is going to go to the animals. I will, I will give to other institutions too, but for me, a lot of it is animals. Anyway, I'm fatigued. Um, I was very tempted yesterday though, to get that litter robot thingy. Um, I didn't, it's expensive, but I'm still, I'm, I'm kind of, I've got the tab open. Uh, I know it would change my life because instead of four litter boxes, I'd have one, um, but uh, yeah, so while the ads for sales uh, were pummeling me, I did escape for a bit. It was a great Thanksgiving holiday uh, with a bunch of turkeys, some meat, some human turkeys. I actually spent a lot of time <laughs> with some really cute kids and, uh, you know, played indoor soccer, like in the house. Yeah, just like fun little games, ate a ton of food. Um, and it was sort of like the perfect balance of like party fun and relaxing fun. Cause it was, it was like a four day weekend and it, it felt long. Finally, uh, played some pool, you know, drank some, you know, hot toddies and it was festive. It was nice. Um, but now we are on to the kind of the long slog before Christmas, uh, you know, in terms of the, the pre Christmas, Christmas and post Christmas sales. Um, you know, I was thinking, maybe we should just skip all of that and just stop shopping and like watch the fire in the fireplace, go for a walk on the beach. Maybe it's not all about sales. It's not all about material things. Oh, Uh, Heather, yes it is. Come on. (laughs) What are y'all into nature? And you probably don't even wear shoes in the house. This is true. But (laughs) this is kind of our plan for Christmas. It's kind of interesting. It's, this is a new kind of holiday year for me don't get me wrong I do love a present like the next gal but it's been I feel like we've kind of taken a little too far so for Mm, Christmas mm -hmm. my partner my boyfriend isn't a Christmas guy he he does not have he doesn't care about Christmas he thinks it's too consumerist he doesn't want to be part of it he doesn't even want a tree he's 
He's just, he's a festive guy. He loves to go to a party, but he's just not big into Christmas. Mm, I respect mm -hmm. it. Sometimes I wish maybe he was kind of a little bit in, into it so that we could get festive and he'd, he'd kind of get into, I need to figure out where, what level I'm in on it. Like, I don't even know what I like anymore because my parents kind of dictated it, you know, up until a few years ago. And so I'm still kind of like, I, I'm more festive in, I, I would say that I'm more into it than my boyfriend for sure. Um, I'd like to get a tree. I'd like to decorate a little bit. I'd like to, you know, uh, I don't know, like have some hot chocolate and have a fire in the fireplace and just kind of get cozy. Um, I'm still debating the Christmas tree though. And I, I, I don't really know. I feel like I need to tap into what it is that I do want. Um, I'm kind of feeling the potted tree you know like the one that you plant in the backyard when you're done with it you 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 save a tree basically my dad used to do it when we were kids and it's just a little more contained you keep growing that tree uh in the yard as opposed to like cutting something down and then you throw it in the landfill either way um a tree's gonna have to wait until after our little mini jaunt to new orleans we're leaving day after tomorrow I'm excited for this little New Orleans long weekend. I don't know what to expect. Um, apparently there's a Krampus festival, which should be interesting and scary. What's Krampus? Um, Krampus is like sort of the creepy Santa character. What? That like supposedly like Like a hits crampy kids Santa? With a, Kr Krampus with a K. Oh. It's a legend. Oh, okay. This is not like SantaCon. No, 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 Where people are like, no. make it like sexy. It's more of a European, uh, apparently it's a half goat, half demon monster that oh, punishes misbehaving yeah. children. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. and he's got horns and he's just like, it originated in Germany and it, it, it's, it, it's this weird thing that does not surprise me that a place like New Orleans is celebrating you know, New Orleans probably has the most celebrations and festivals like on the planet of any other place. Um, but I'm I'm slightly scared. I think it's going to be kind of weird. Mm -hmm. But we'll we'll take pictures. Uh, should be kind of a, a hoot. I'm leaving on Thursday. Back on Monday, the show will go on. Uh, well, Heather, I'm glad to hear that. I'm <laughs> I I've only been to New Orleans once. It was a long mm -hmm. time ago. It was for work. So I kind of like. Got off a plane, you know, checked into a hotel, um, mm -hmm. didn't even go to like, you know, um, Bourbon Street, um, mm -hmm. you know, did a thing and then kind of just it was a it was a nice hotel. And so, I, you know, anytime I get put up at a nice hotel for work, I'm like, yeah, um, so, you know, so I was like it was one of those hotels where when you're in bed like you press a button and the TV like rises up from the foot of the bed. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Which is yeah, weird. Totally. Like you wouldn't want that in your like own bedroom, but like in a hotel you're like, "Oh yeah, now it's time to order some room service." You know? Oh, that sounds so fun. And be in a row, yeah, no, you know, for 12 hours. But um but but yeah, so I've I've technically been to New Orleans, but I don't know anything about it. I mean, I know a lot about it from, you know, photos and yeah, videos and, and, you know, good and bad from people who uh -huh. have been there. But I've always, um, for people who are, you know, they kind of, I don't know, have a traveling spirit and, mm -hmm. you know, and really like to get into, you know, what makes a, a place a place. Everybody yeah. loves it. It's such a, to me, I, I've been there a bunch uh, for work and for not. And uh, I've had a lot of fun there, um, done a lot, of, like a wide variety of things. Um, and I mean, it's a big city. It's a lot to explore. I haven't been everywhere. Um, but what I love about it, it's really, I find it to be like, not like any other city on the planet. It's so unique um, and so full of spirit and life you know it really is people people like to party there you know people are celebrating people are um you know listening to music it, it i don't think it really sleeps um i did find a, a funny explanation about krampus <laughs> have you been naughty then beware krampus is coming so apparently the tradition is supposed to like you know uh, strike terror in children 
Um, but apparently, traditionally, it carries a birch rod to whip those who have misbehaved, people who have strayed from the straight and narrow. So I'm really curious to see what this festival has in store. I'm like, how are you going to be, who are, who's dressing up and what are they dressing up as? And I don't really know uh, what to expect. So the photographs should be very interesting. Um, but yes, excited for this trip. I'm, I'm sort of. Good old Krampus. Uh, it's the I season know, of Krampus. Right? Well, you know what? Maybe this is going to get Elijah on board for Christmas after all. Maybe. Yeah, he's excited for the Krampus festival. <laughs> you know, maybe it's just maybe it's just it's just weird enough. You know, just yeah. weird enough. He likes the weird. Yeah, exactly, sure. exactly. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I can't wait to hear about it, and we will all hear about it um, soon enough um, once you get back. But yeah. um, I wanted to quickly uh, mention when I was doing Daily Tech News Show earlier today. We're recording this on a Tuesday. Um, I One of the stories that we talked about was the study. This was a UK-based study, so um, mm-hmm. certainly didn't include New Orleans or you know US anything. UK-based study of people of various ages and how they use the internet. This is an annual mm-hmm. study uh, that's been going on for some time. This year, a lot of the kind of highlighted, highlight? highlighted, um, uh, <laughs> stuff was all about AI. Like who's using mm-hmm. it? Why do they use yes. it? When do they use it? How old are they? And, you know, I won't, you know, run through the minutia of, of all this data, but the takeaway is young people, I guess we'll call them Gen Z and Gen uh-huh. A, I think is what's after Gen Z now. Cause we're going back to the mm-hmm. start of the alphabet. Um, are, you know, this is something that, you know, you use it for schoolwork, you use it uh, for, for a variety of things. It's just something mm-hmm. that you use as a tool, kind of like how if uh, my my great grandmother was like, libraries, what's the Dewey Decimal System? And I'm like, <laughs> well, it's like really helpful. You can like learn everything. You just have to mm-hmm. like know how to look for it. I feel like that's what's going on. And so you've got Mm -hmm. people who are our age, either who are like, this is pretty rad. Let's embrace it. Mm -hmm. You know, let's be part of it. Many people who are, you know, our, our, uh, our peers in age are building these tools. So, you know, you're building, you're using, you you know, you're figuring out, but like, imagine being like 10 and you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, I need the answer to something. Oh, let's just ask, you know, such and such, you know, that's, you know, might be Snapchat's AI tool. Maybe it's chat mm-hmm. GPT, which actually tends to skew a little bit older, weirdly enough. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that's because of, you know, the press that it's gotten. I don't really totally know. Again, this is UK based. Um, mm-hmm. But um, but uh, yeah, it just got me thinking of like, this is how I feel. You know, you and I were just kind of just out of high school when the Internet was like a real thing. Um, uh, BBSs and, you know, you know, being able to dial into the net was around for a long time before that, but it was like AOL online, you know, was, was a lot of people's first foray into like, oh, wow, I can like talk to people on a computer, you know, and like, (laughs) you know, enter queries and get results. And like, this is pretty fun. Wow. Now I got Uh lost. uh Now I'm like in a really other weird place on the internet, you know, like, how do I get back? You know, we, a lot of that stuff sounds so antiquated now, but there was a time where there just wasn't any of that. And if you're young enough, you just don't know that life. Totally. You've, you've never, you've never had a life where there wasn't this. Um, and you know, that's, that's, you know, that's so bizarre. It's kind of like us and like, um, television, you know, tape cassettes yeah. and CDs. Yeah. Or, like, you know. like, I mean, my mom was alive. She always loves to tell the story. She's like, I was 10 before television existed. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I mean, I was young, but like, we just sat around the radio. Like, that's what everyone oh, did. totally. I was just going to say my like, dad Like, if you were even lucky enough to have a listen radio. Listen to radio shows. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, radio like, shows. Like, she's like, <laughs> Live. like, we got a television when television was invented. You know, it's like, <laughs> wow. You know, like, it's so mind-blowing how it really they're, is. you know, these generations that, and it's not, I mean, trust me, sometimes I'm like, you know, if we didn't have TV, maybe I'd be better off. But, um, you know, it's not <laughs> like... 
oh, the more technology you have, the better. Very much a, a you know, it, one size does not fit all, right? Yeah, but, for sure. But this is, the AI thing is like, okay, the, here's our wave. This is the next wave. Yeah. No, you're right. It is. It is. And it's like, what's it for? You know, is it like, we're trying to figure that out right now. And that's why people are so flipped out about it. Half the time is like, well, it might be bad. And it's like, well, okay, well, what do you think is going to be bad about it? Well, I don't know, but it might be. I think it's the, it's the unknown yeah. and people don't like the unknown. And so it seems scary, but like it is helpful. And I mean, it can be helpful and use it for good. Um, but I did hear some, it was some AI professor or something on the radio the other day saying like, that they're they've been you know they track who uses it like chat gpt and they they were like super surprised at how little people are using it and that they sort of expected it to be more utilized um which i thought was interesting and i've only used it once or twice honestly but i have friends who use it all the time like they you know like every day um, but, uh, yeah, it is, it, it's interesting, Sarah, because it is like kind of the next wave. It's like, this is what, uh, kids are going to be so naturally, um, geared to like use this in their everyday life. And it's going to be weird for us to see it evolve. Yeah. It's going to be very strange. We're going to be those old people going, I remember when I was, <laughs> when AI first started. There weren't even <laughs> yeah. any robots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. I mean, it's it's. I used to always compare this to because again, I was in college when sort of like I was also in college for broadcasting, and broadcasting was going through like a huge shift because, like, video editing had just come on the scene, like Avid Systems. Yes, totally. you know, like that was really new, really new. Like everyone was doing reel to reel mm -hmm. shit before that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in fact, totally. like most of my like formal training is like based on a world that does not exist anymore, unless you want to yep. just I don't know, be like you know cool about it, um, and just be like I like reel to reel editing. <laughs> like who would want to do that? Like no. Well, it's like some people still like. Um, they still develop their own photographs. Like I was just reading an article yes. about that new Emma Stone movie. Another good where... example. It's like, yeah, maybe it's a little bit hobbyist and it's like, it might be a little harder to do. Um, that's like outside of a hobbyist thing, but it's certainly mm -hmm. possible. But you know, I, yeah, you could I remember kind of I thinking, gosh, you know, a lot of this stuff as I go into the workforce, you know, as a, 18 year old well I was uh -huh. older than that when I graduated college but you know um you know this is this is a, that's that's how old I was when I started college but you know this is all gonna be really different like I wonder what like my jobs are gonna be like mm -hmm. and sure enough I mean the industry is I mean people don't even work at tv stations anymore some people do but most nope. of us don't but here we are you and i are i mean you all can't see us but heather and i are like <laughs> i mean we've been doing internet video for quite some time we're like we're like kind of relics because whenever people go well, wh well how did you start your career and i'm like well i started in uh, broadcast television and they're like huh what's that <laughs> it's like and then yeah we did internet tv like we didn't create it or invent it but it's like we were there right at the beginning right at the beginning you know? yeah right at the foundation whenever i say broadcasting like i mean <laughs> like what my like major in college was is not really a conversation i have with people all that much anymore but it yeah, every so often it comes up and sure. i say broadcasting and they're like oh like sports <laughs> because that's almost one of the only things that you still think of as it's like so a broadcast thing because it's live totally. and it's regular. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yep. oh, broadcasting, it's live and mm -hmm. it's regular. And that's yep. true. But I never, you know, I've never really worked in the sports industry. It's just, it's, it's. I know it's funny. It's like the word has gone the way of the dodo. It's entertain entertainment is just, it's so different. It's so different. It really now. is so different. And I remember, I so remember the wave of reality TV, like knocking on my door. And I was like, kind of, I was kind of trying to decide what to do with my career. And I think it was the time when you hired me at an internet uh, at Revision 3 in San Francisco. And at the time it was either like, okay, you go into the hungry maw of reality TV in Los Angeles 
and that's what you're going to be doing, you're probably going to fall into only doing that because a lot of people did. When we all left that one TV station, I couldn't do it. I was like, this is not what I want to do. I wanted to stay in LA, but I just wasn't interested in the reality TV uh, world. Um, <laughs> nothing has really changed since then. Um, but actually speaking of reality TV, I wonder, uh, I, I've mentioned this to you, Sarah, but I'm wondering if anyone out there is watching the show called The Curse. It's it's an A24 and Showtime uh, show, and it's it's really unique. It's a, it's a really weird, dark comedy, but it satirizes kind of like a home renovation show. So the one of the creators, uh, this guy, Nathan Fielder, he's a comedian. He's he's done this pretty much most of his career. He he creates content where he's sort of taking the piss out of like reality TV. He's like, he kind of makes these over the top like reality shows that like kind of makes fun of reality TV in a way. Um, him and this guy, Benny Safdie, who he's part of the Safdie brothers. He's done some films, they're filmmakers. And it's starring Emma Stone. So it's kind of like a, a an interesting mix of film and tv people um but it's a home renovation show mm, <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's um it's basically about this couple you know it's emma stone and nathan fielder they're a married couple and there's this like curse that sort of disturbs the relationship um and they're like trying to have a baby and they're making their new hd tv show called flipanthropy which is a funny name, but they but they're basically like trying to uh, create a, an eco development in this small town in like New Mexico or something, and it, it's a it's worth watching because it is very unique. I really like the filmmakers behind it. the The guys that I worked with on the movie last year actually directed some of the episodes, um, and the my my point of this whole thing is that the latest episode, which was the third episode. Um, we watched it a bit late, about a week late. Um, we, uh, we kept trying to watch it over the last couple of days, but there's closed captioning on it. Like it's like burned on it. So we can't watch it. So like you, you Why press would it play. be burned on it? Well, I'll explain. Okay. So like, you know, you press play. I think all y'all know what closed captioning is. It just speaks what's on the screen in case you can't see it. And so it's like the Showtime logo, it's a silver orb, and then it's red, and then blah, 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 and so-and-so sitting in your car, and you know that kind of thing. Well, we went through all the usual steps to turn it off. We're, we're not dummies. We're, we're pretty tech savvy. My, my boyfriend is, is very tech savvy with you know, TV settings to make you know, it look more cinematic, or the audio, like he's, a, he's an editor. Um, so none of that was turned on. Like we, we never have captions on, ever. It was just on this one episode. Um, we tested all, like tons of other shows, other episodes, movies, so weird. So we're like, okay, well, we'll come back tomorrow and see if it, we assume that like Showtime would be on it and they would fix it or whatever. Looked at some Reddit, uh, you know, boards about it. Other people were like, what the heck? So other people were experiencing it too. <laughs> it's very bizarre, but like, what do you do? Because now I'm like paying for, like I basically bought a month of Paramount Plus, which is so confusing because now there's a Showtime app, but you yeah. don't log into Showtime anymore. You log into Paramount because it's part of Paramount. Sure, sure. Fine. Yeah, I know. Uh, but yeah. like the app is still there. And it's just all very confusing and we're totally stumped. The internet is stumped. It's been days. It's been almost a week. Is Showtime on it? Anyone else out there experiencing And, and it's not something where like you could just be like, okay, the subtitles are there, but just ignore them. It's too much. No, it's, it's like it's speaking it. Oh. I don't mind the subtitles, but it's like going, the silver orb flashes across the screen oh, with the yeah, Showtime yeah. logo. It's yeah. like that. No, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. It's like there's no way we're going <laughs> to watch there it. There have so been I'm a like, few, you know, I won't, I won't tell you how I came across them uh, for research purposes, but there have been a few like <laughs> movies, you know, that I came across uh -huh. where I'm like, Korean subtitles, like I can just ignore the Korean subtitles. I really want to watch this movie. Exactly. You know, that kind of yeah. thing. But mm, yeah, what you're describing, I guess, is just like, it's like distracting to the point where you're like, this isn't even worth it. Well, it's also, it's it's funny because it, the the show is called The Curse. So it's, it's maybe cursed, you're cursed, kind of. Um, maybe the joke is on us. Uh, maybe there's a candid cam camera somewhere. Um, but anyway, y'all, um, Showtime, A24, 
Benny Safdie, uh, Emma Stone, maybe you've got some intel. Email us at hi at have such a good day dot com. Let me know how to watch episode three of your show. Yeah. Come on, Emma. Or if any of y'all out there have have experienced this or watching this show, uh, I would love to hear from you. Well, Heather, I, you're not really cursed. Um, I don't know. <laughs> you know, you might you might see some cursed Santa Clauses uh, down in Nola. Oh yeah. Um, when oh, you're yeah. when you're there later this week. But um, just a reminder to all of you as we sort of wrap up this episode of Have Such a Good Day, which by the way is episode two sixteen two hundred sixteen. If y'all didn't think we were committed, now you know. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we're just going to keep <laughs> at it. Uh, we're not stopping here. No, that's for sure. You can't stop, won't stop. Uh, but just a reminder, <laughs> we, we are 100% community supported. Uh, that means you. If you want to know more about how to directly support the show, if you can part with a few dollars a month, you can get um, not only a ad-free version of the show, a lot of people like that. Um, you can join our Discord, chat with us, and 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 your 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 peers, your brethren, as it were. <laughs> um, um, and find out more at patreoncom slash have such a good day. Thank you in advance. I know it is the season for a lot of our pockets to be a little tight because we're all, you know, getting gifts for, for everybody else. Or some of us are, anyway. <laughs> I don't ever get anything. My mom asked me the other day, she's like, do you want more socks for Christmas? And I'm like, not, no, no. Oh my God, I have a whole bag of socks that I have to keep out of my drawer because I can't fit all my yeah, socks it, in said drawer. There's something I, about, I gotta there's get, something get about moms and socks. I know, you know, I know, it, and I know. and trust me, I mean, I I love socks. I'm I'm a pro sock, but I yeah, I, I'm with you. Like my sock drawer is, I it it runneth over. Um, anyway, um, we know that uh, not everybody can part with you know any kind of. It's just it times sometimes are tight. Times are tight. Yeah, all year round. We get it. We know. Um, if you if you can if you can support us monetarily amazing if you can't but maybe you have a friend who might like the show that means more to us really than anything else so it does. thank you for spreading the word thank you for being our buddies and oh total speaking of buddies actually our discord so we got we got a good crew in there we got mike we got ed we've got we got jay mac we've got damien mm -hmm. we have who else do we have gardner we have jolly tiki mm -hmm. we got lots of fun people tina i mean endless I, and i'm sorry if i didn't mention your name you, you probably just aren't active right now jake philly philly code hound um but mike was saying recently you we were all talking about turkey day obviously um and shopping and all that and you know he was saying that he did a little online shopping but didn't go near any stores i do not uh blame him mm, um mm -hmm. he said that uh his family went to target seemed quiet um he's like i love these terms uh we mentioned some off the top top of the show but like doorbuster deals and like <laughs> just i mean i cannot anymore i am wiped yeah. out uh anyway um y'all help keep the lights on and we love you you guys are our buddies um so keep keep the chatter and uh and 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 heather when we when we uh come back <laughs> together for episode <laughs> 217 you know what it's going to be it's going to be december okay uh yeah so get ready for that oh, jelly sarah okay? i am already like i'm in somewhat it's weird. I'm in somewhat dread mode, but also excitement mode because it my birthday's coming up and I'm having like a little festive, a little soiree, party. a little soiree, a little soiree, if soiree. you will, with a DJ. No big deal. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but I'm excited for that, and I think I'm proud of myself that I planned it because it's something to look forward to. But December, no, do not want to be older. Don't really want to go through Christmas, even though. Uh, we're we're gonna make the best of it, Sarah. And yeah, um, then it's a know. new year, twenty twenty four. Oh my gosh! I mean, Divisible granted, by two. Thanksgiving was like so mellow. Like my mom and I ate food, and then I went to bed early. That's that's what <laughs> happened. Um, but I knew I was gonna do that, and it was so chill. Yeah. It's like yeah. you know what, Christmas, especially because I'm you know probably moving. Um, you mm -hmm. know, or at least I'm you know, that's that's where my head is at right now. 
Might be a little chaotic, but y'all are going to yeah. be along for the ride. Like it or but not. It's nice to kick off the new year. You know, you got a new year, new house, new, year, new, new me, new city, new face. New you. No, I'm just kidding. New haircut, <laughs> all the things. New face. Oh, God. You are going to Los Angeles. Did you make an appointment with a no, plastic surgeon? I just, I just, no, you, you know that. Okay. I, I know we're now we're now we're getting silly, but um, the movie Vanilla Sky, Tom Cruise, Penelope yeah. Cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Is based on a Spanish movie, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from Spain, called "Open Your Eyes," which is mm-hmm. Penelope Cruz, but another guy who plays the Tom Cruise role. But it's like the same movie. I never really watched the original movie. I only mm-hmm. watched Vinyl Sky," which I thought was sort of like eh, it's, it was fine. It wasn't that movie. yeah, but like interesting yeah. concept, right? Sure. The first movie has much more of like this, like mask that this guy wears i'm not gonna spoil anything i'm not spoiling anything you know it's weird it's weird enough of a movie on its own but i've been thinking about the idea of like yeah like how could you wear a mask out and about and like trick people into thinking that it wasn't a mask that's hard to do (laughs) right yeah so heather i'm not going to be um you know, sporting that kind of new face in LA. Just the face of somebody who's happy to not look at Zillow listings anymore. Yes, that's a happy that's face. That's a happy face. I... And yes, we're happy to is. have all y'all with us. We hope you're feeling happy. We hope you're safe and warm or cool, depending on what the weather is like outside. We love you. And until next week, I'll be Sarah. And I'll be Heather. Have such a good day. Bye. <laughs>